We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Deborah Andrus, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2017 for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so you teach 10th grade honors English, you're the yearbook advisor and the department chair. I am. That sounds like a lot. It's a lot, but um, it You're at Cordova High School, by the I way. I am. I'm yeah. at Cordova High School here in Rancho Cordova. It helps me balance um, to see what's going on in all of my other teachers' classroom, but as well as in my own classroom. Um, and I also get to be a part of what's happening on the campus with other departments, not just my own. And so I love that. I love to have um, my feet in kind of everything, really, at Cordova High. So Honors English, um, 10th grade, uh, a combination of modern and classics? Yes, American, European, uh, Latino, mm -hmm. we, we cover it all. My children read 10 stories, 10 literature books in the year as an honor student as we prepare them to go on to the diploma program at Cordova High, which is new with the um, IB program at Cordova. Mm -hmm. And so um, we hit them hard the sophomore year to really filter out um, if students are ready or not for the rigors of the DP program. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, what are some of the classics that you read? Animal Farm. Okay. We love that one. Um, Lord of the Flies. Okay. The kids love that one. Ender's Game is always a great okay. one to do as well. Bless Me Ultima, not not really well Don't known, know but one, yeah. a great uh, book. Uh, Charles Dickens, we, Great Expectations. The kids don't like the length, but they're, if they can get through that, um, I feel like they pretty much can read anything. <laughs> so that, because that's a real challenge for kids to get them uh, into the classics. I mean, especially if they've just you know put down, you know. Uh, Harry Potter or something right. that's maybe a little easier to read or Hunger Games or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So how do you get them interested in something that's so old? It's so old. <laughs> that's funny you say that. I really incorporate technology into my classroom. Mm -hmm. um, I love different websites. I love different apps to use. I'm a huge fan of the QR code, Google form quizzes. Um, making it exciting. My students do lots of projects um, through these apps, Lucid Charts, S'more.com, working with each other. Google Classroom is a huge, um, I, I say it's my saving grace in my classroom to keep us up to date with things that are going on. There is pertinent information in our literature for these students today to partake of. And if we're not doing it in the classroom, we're doing an injustice for them. And um, we have to keep literature alive. That's why I always tell my students to write in the present when you're talking about literature, because it's alive. When we close the book, it's only holding just for a minute. And so we speak about it as if these characters are happening right now. And um, there's always something that they can take from that book into their own lives. And I think that's important. So it takes a while to kind of get them to really understand and, and kind of understand the language because even though it's it's English it's it's old English it's you know several hundred years old in right. some cases and so well you we, probably spend a lot of time explaining what it means something like Julius Caesar I do not send that book home we read it together mm -hmm verse by verse and we go through it and we reenact some things and we look at the the videos of it and um, we really have to break down that language barrier but once they get the rhythm of it and they start to understand how it flows then they start to love it and and they crave for more so mm -hmm. i think that's the exciting part so you get them excited that way and it helps motivate them yes and i am hoping that motivation carries through not just through high school but on into college and even on into their own families in the future so 10th grade is kind of a year where you know, they, they've had a year or so on, the, on campus already, mm -hmm. but they're still adjusting. They're yes. still kind of figuring themselves out. And a lot of that creeps into the classroom. How do, you, how do you work with that where you're trying to teach a difficult subject like honors English and you've got you know, a lot of the personal things going on with, with 10th graders? Um, they're still trying to discover who they are and mm -hmm. what groups they fit into and what groups they don't fit into. And there's usually struggles at home um, that go hand in hand with that as well. Um, I always tell my students this is a safe place. This is a fun place. Um, I always bring in the fun aspect first and then that helps me reach maybe to see what some of the problems are. Um, you have to grow. It's an ebb and flow in teaching and we learn just as much as they learn. Um, I, I need a student to feel safe in my classroom before they can open up about some personal issues. Also it's really important to collaborate with one another and have those dialogue pieces. Um, you're more than welcome to disagree with what I'm saying in the classroom or what another student is saying in the classroom as long as you do it academically. Um, that we have that verbiage to speak to one another and teaching that verbiage is so important at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. so that carries on throughout our classroom um, and it's just a safe environment to have dialogue. I, I'd rather have a dialogue than a debate with a student any day. 
teaching to uh, respectfully disagree. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So t uh, tenth grade is also uh, an age where you know, kids are pulling away from their parents mm -hmm. and they want more autonomy, but still family involvement is really important at that age. So how do you strike that balance? What do you do? Um, I think it's really important that, that parents understand uh, what they're learning, number one. At back to school night, I ask my parents to sign in with a QR code. And lots of parents are like, QR what? And so mm -hmm. as soon as they understand that their students do more on their cell phone than just play Pokemon Go or you know listen to music or something, I think that raises the level of appreciation for their student. Um, and, and I love it when a student can go home when I taught middle school, ask your parents about the outsiders. I know they've read it. And so it's starting that dialogue at home. We have to be huge advocates, um, an open door policy for parents to come into the classroom to see what we're doing. They need to be reading the same books as their students are reading and then that appreciation grows. The dinner table conversations take on new meanings. Mm -hmm. um, I often challenge my students with new words when we're learning Latin Greek roots. Go home and use that word at the dinner table tonight and see what kind of reaction you get from mom and dad. Um, and so it's just really being organized. I have the website up, parents can see the agenda. They can click on the websites that we're going to see. Um, it's important that we bring home and school back together again. That's hard. Oh, it's so very hard, especially with, um, I would say, a language barrier. I don't speak Spanish. I, in Russian is a large community in Rancho Cordova. But what I love about it is we always have a student that does. And so um, let, get mom on the phone. Let's talk with mom. We have translators in our district. We have a fabulous EL program um, to bridge the gap. We just need to work a little harder is all. And we can't be afraid of a parent coming to sit in our classroom to observe us. So it's important. Have you always thought of being a teacher? Was that a dream of yours or did you just kind of find yourself in the profession? No, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I have four children of my own and um, I have had the privilege of having three of my children in my own English class. And Was um, it a pleasure for them? <laughs> they had to call me Mrs. Andrews. They could not call me mom. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I always treat my classroom as if my own children are still in that classroom. And I've always dreamt of being a teacher and being around students all day. They're fabulous. We have so much to learn from them as teachers and, and grow from what they're learning. And technology is such a fantastic part right now as we integrate that into our school systems. And I just think it's a great time. Why wouldn't you want to be a teacher? It's such a noble profession. And um, I love it every day. It's something new. So what was it like when you found out you were the teacher of the year? I was a little shocked. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in the profession for 10 years and uh, eight of that I've spent at the middle school level and two of it at Cordova High. And um, I just felt very privileged that my colleagues would choose me to be that, um, especially for the whole district because I learn every day still. And uh, I think that maybe what makes me a, a good professional as well is that I'm still learning. I'm still growing with my students. I'm pushing them as much as I push myself to use technology to become a better lover of literature um, and, and to really to give back to our community. That's what it's about. Uh, Rancho Cordova is a great place to live and to work at the same time and I want to just see my students flourish and be the best that they can be. And That's why I teach. So what would you say to someone who's considering being a teacher? What's your sales pitch? I would say it's hard. It's, um, it's nothing that anyone has ever really described to you, but I would also say you will never find a better job. That um, it's not about the paycheck. What the paycheck is comes in that form of thank yous. Um, it's about seeing a student excel. It's about seeing a student walk across the stage and get that piece of paper that is so important to them and to yourself. It's about bringing families together um, in a community um, atmosphere. It's about giving back to others and just when you think you can't do it, you push a little more and you can. Um, I love doing what I do. I love being in all the different departments and seeing the growth and working with the IB students and working with honor students and I've taught eight years of summer school so I've mm -hmm. seen the vast array of different types of students and I love it. I, I can't describe to you more joy that comes from a profession like education. Mm -hmm. Well, you convinced me. Good, you go. good. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. We've been speaking with uh, Deborah Andrus, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.